let's let's talk about the aforementioned Josh Downs, who Dynasty League Football October startup ADP was wide receiver 53. Keep trade cut. I double checked after being wrong about Rasheed Rice. He's at wide receiver 35. This last game against the vaunted Browns defense, six targets, five catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown for 21 half DPR points. Now up to 9.8 points per game himself. But he, on the other hand, up to a 19.2% target share, becoming an actual volume wide receiver in that offense. Passed Alec Pierce very quickly and has been a big part of the offense ever since. And this is actually even better with Gardner Minshew in town as the starting QB. And we know that's happening rest of year. Um, on our recap show, the good, the bad box score that came out this morning, I actually mentioned how, like, I think Josh Downs is firmly like a wide receiver three rest of the season. And it wouldn't surprise me if we're talking about him as a low end wide receiver two. with that in mind as a first year player, like he's got to be climbing up dynasty rankings, I think. And it's just a matter of how far up you actually put him. How are you feeling, Josh? Yeah, I, I have him ranked, uh, like Skylar said at the end, I have him ranked just ahead of Rasheed Rice. I have him at 38, uh, as wide receiver, so borderline wide receiver three, and especially after this game, I could probably move him up a little more. Uh, he's really submitted himself as the second option behind Pittman, um, and you can even argue he's been just as efficient as Pittman. Uh, he has less snaps, but only, I think, 70-something yards less, and uh, the targets per route run are very close. Uh, so I think as his uh, route participation stays up in the 80s like it is, I think he's going to continue to have this pretty high floor he's shown to have. Um, at UNC, he showed that he played bigger than his size and he could win at all levels, and he's continuing to do that in the NFL. I was a little unsure that his size would translate and his physicality would, but it's shown to so far. So, And he's just been really good in the red zone. He's getting he's second in red zone targets behind Michael Pittman, and one of his last uh, touchdowns, he showed his crisp route running and ability to get open quickly. So I think that helps in the red zone, especially with Minshew. Yeah, he was true at UNC, one of those players like – does the size doesn't matter. Uh, he mm -hmm. makes it work. Um, Skyler, what do you think? Yeah. Well, if you're talking, the size doesn't matter. I mean, it was my biggest thing coming into the season for Josh Downs. When people talked about his size is he excelled in the red zone. He has this little ability, he has this ability to separate in an area where that separation really matters. And he was able to get his way into the end zone a lot in college. And that was something we had seen from some smaller guys in the league, like a Jahan Dotson as a rookie tower locker throughout his career. And I thought there was a legitimate chance if Josh Hounds could continue and bring in that skill to the NFL that he could be a player who has more red zone upside than people think. And typically what's our problem with these wide receivers that are five foot nine, maybe on a good day for Josh Downs. He probably did that with his cleats on, but uh, you know, touchdowns really, that's the difference, right? So if he can be kind of that possession receiver, I mean, the guy who's getting 20% of the targets for a team that with, with uh, Anthony Richardson going down, probably has to throw the ball more, give me 20% of the targets and the ability to score maybe four, five, six touchdowns on the season, I think Josh Downs has a lot more uh, floor and ceiling than people give him credit for. And with three good weeks in a row for fantasy, um, he's he's got to be moving up people's rankings, right? We were talking with Rashi Rice. If I was a competing team and I was trying to use the facade of week seven uh, to go acquire a player who could give me more stabilization in my flexes, I'd be selling Rashi Rice. I'm doing the exact opposite for Josh Downs. If I have a competing team, I'm very content rolling Josh Downs out there in my flex has kind of found money. He was a guy who was getting pushed down to the late second round, sometimes early third of people's rookie drafts. And I absolutely love that. He was a guy for us that was, I had him right there kind of at that 201 spot in my rookie rankings coming into the season. But it was one of those where I'm like, well, if I had the 201, I'm probably trading the pick because it didn't feel great at the time. But that is where I had him amongst this rookie class. So this doesn't come as a significant surprise here for me. I really like Josh Downs. I like what he has been doing. Um, one question I will pose to you guys based off this conversation. Um, if we are looking to acquire him on a team that isn't competing and we happen to have players, this is no bias here. It might be one of my teams. If you had the last two players you have on a rebuilding team that you would like to dish out before the season ends are Amari Cooper and Aaron Jones. Are you willing to straight swap either of those two players for Josh Downs? And if so, uh, I will elevate that and say, are you even willing to, throw a sweetener on top to acquire Josh Downs? Or do you feel the plus should be on the other end? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go for it. I think that you should be able to get a plus on top of Downs in a lot of cases, but if you couldn't, 
I would be fine with it because I think I I do think he's on the ascension. I think like we're, next week we're going to look back and we're going to have another reaction on KTC for Josh Downs after like another good game. I think that's like going to keep happening. Uh, I think he's going to keep moving up. What do you think, Josh? I think I would definitely take Amari Cooper over Downs because I think just Deshaun struggles and stuff. I'm not sure if he's healthy or what, but I just think I think Cooper still has at least three years of being a wide receiver two in the league. So I might be. Be willing to throw need extra on top of downs to get for Cooper, but Aaron Jones with the running back situation, I would if you could if you could get rid of Jones for downs, I would do it. Yeah, Jones for downs is like the easy one to me. Cooper, I do think like it, it is a little bit tougher, and I it's a little bit closer to being like I need the the mm-hmm. plus, but on on a completely rebuilding team, I don't mind just the straight swap. Yeah, um, I don't like going into next year. I think there's a chance like we're not projecting them all that different from each other um so yeah Yeah, it's just one of those situations where i feel like even if it feels gross now you got to think um down the road right if we fast forward six eight weeks or not even into the off season uh the perception of veterans every single year we've been saying for what seems like six seven years on amari cooper he's a great buy in the off season he's just discounted every single year and that doesn't change as you get older aaron jones has been a player his entire career has been worth more in your lineup than he's been worth in market and so I feel like if you are to wait to make that deal because of perceived value, we could end up in a spot where Josh Downs is viewed in the eyes of many as superior to both options in as soon as a month, two months, three months. Nevertheless, I think six months, it's not even going to be a conversation. So whether or not that's true, um, you know, those other plays might be holds into the off season, of course. But if you can get that deal done now, uh, I think it's worthwhile. It's just tough to swallow. It's one that second we get done, I'm going to officially click the submit button on, but you know, I think I think it's worthwhile depending on where you're at, especially with the Packers' offense being just looking a lot worse than people expected. I I think the sooner you could get that done, the better because I think his value. And I I just bought him in a dynasty one now where I have a decent bit of running backs. So I'm not not too optimistic about him moving forward, especially the way this offense looks. So, uh, real quick before we get out of here, I think we should talk about acquiring Josh Downs because that's a little bit of a difficult thing, like going out to go target a player that's on the Ascension. You know, you have to basically be okay with overpaying what the current cost is to really go out and buy a player like this. Is that something you're willing to do? I can take this if you'd like, because of like the conversation we had around Calvin Ridley earlier in the season where it was, well, I wanted obviously a first and Calvin Ridley was being valued more than that, but I wanted to find a way to squeeze in something else that I thought maybe was perceived differently. And Josh Downs was like the immediate guy in the roster. I was like, this guy's got to be a part of the deal. Uh, I think that's how you get it done here for Josh Downs. Cause if you go for Josh Downs, manners who haven't spent a second round pick, most likely on him. You'd, you're not going to send more than a second round pick probably to go and acquire. Yeah, like, you'd have to send a first if it's just raw picks. And there's no way I'm sending a first for Josh Downs at this point. I'm sorry. Just the type of player he is. I'd rather roll the a significant upside uh, uptick there on a first rather than Josh Downs. And if you offer a second and a third, it's just not enough for a manager to move, move off of a second rounder. That probably seems like a rare hit, right? So in order to get a straight deal done, you're overpaying in a way that I don't feel comfortable doing uh, for a player. We are two months into a season, right? But if you are going to acquire Josh Downs, I think it's the way of offloading someone with more excitement and then going out to get Josh Downs. A team needs a running back. They're competing right now. And you've got Alvin Kamara on your roster who you couldn't sell all offseason because no one would even give you a second-round pick for him. Well, now you can turn to that manager and you can trade Alvin Kamara. You can get Josh Downs at a third. Like I don't think that's an absurd deal to do. So the way I would approach it is go by somebody's positional need and if Josh Downs isn't that, you send them what they need, you get Josh Downs back, or you offload a popular name, a guy who's really performing, and then you can try to say, well, Downs would be the guy I'd want if you you ask them if they have interest and they say yes. So that's the way I would go about acquiring Josh Downs. I think it's really difficult to just come in for Josh Downs and say, what do you want for him? Josh, what do you think? No, I Skyler nailed it on the head. He's easier to throw into a trade or someone bigger that – you're doing otherwise like you said no not many people are gonna set the second even if i paid a third for him i'm still not gonna take a second straight up for him and even then you'd have to get into before people even consider first 26 first and even though you know time lapse and everything it's still just not worth it at that point um so yeah just more as an add-in you could probably sell guys like mixon camara like you said if someone needs a running back and really trying to win now you could probably do that but yeah skylar nailed it 
Yeah, I think another option is possibly, you know, tearing down from a wide receiver and the type of wide receiver you tear down from uh, from your team trading away will kind of depend on your trade partner's needs, whether you're, you know, moving down from a older compete, uh, you know, competitive, you know, roster player or, or, or what there, or if you're moving down from a younger player to a similar asset and downs. Yeah, it's just difficult. It depends how your league values those wide receivers because that whole group we were talking about, a lot of the veterans that you're referring to are just kind of thrown right next to it, right? Because, like, maybe it's something on plus a Keenan Allen, but the if you're going to base off KTC, like, that's not something that's going to get done. So, like, that tier down group, it's tough because a lot of those veterans, like maybe Amari Cooper is that guy you could try to see if you can get close. I think if he was healthy, and it's upsetting because this would have been a good week for them to get him involved in the game plan with Debo Samuel, that's maybe the type of guy with just big name mm -hmm. recognition, a guy who a competitor would see as, well, now I'm sliding Debo into my final flex. Like that's that's a that's a good move. That's the type of name I think you could uh, move and try to get him. Um, so, But that's pretty much the only guy in that range that I think makes a ton of sense. Um, because even at like a Mike Evans, I don't know if that gets done straight. Like Mike and Cooper, I think there's a conversation, but the manager might just not be willing to play ball. Yeah, league marketplace will matter a lot here. Um, so if you have any questions for your particular league, you can jump into our Discord. The link to it is in the description of this video, free Discord. Come ask, you know. I know every league's not going to be the same. Every league's going to value players differently. So while we can like offer these kinds of ideas, they might not work quite in your league, but you might be able to find something similar. So come in there and chat with us about it.